in honor of the first Dyson stickback here to arrive at the lab, let's record this video in 4K. And because the reassembly part of this stickback is going to go so quickly, let's include some airflow tests. So I already put this filter back together right here. This part just literally slips over the skeleton and snaps back in. So that's nice to have that together. And I think we can put this on here. It's a little fiddly, isn't it? Oops, yeah, too far. Yeah, put that back there. And let's put this back on here. There we go. And that goes down. That clicks back in. Woohoo! And let's see. The right side of the tube would be cool. The right side of the tube. There's that. And there's this. Fantastic. Let's see if it still works. We'll put it on max. Alright, so I don't waste the battery charge in here. Let's go ahead and do a couple of airflow tests. Right, test of the cyclone intake. Uh, let's do the low power first. Right, we got nine hundred and sixty four. And right here at the cyclone intake, we're at about 25 CFM. So let's see what that improves to when I put it on high. And I guess I'll just go ahead and leave that so you can see what the difference will be. Why not? Okay, here we go. bumped up quite a bit to 1693 so let's see what that does 1693 and we're up to a whopping 44 CFM so it's almost uh, well geez it's almost 20 CFM higher okay so now let's go and take a look at what's going to make it at the end of this tube. I don't imagine there's going to be all that much of a loss. Hopefully the seals are still pretty tight. Now with the extension tube attached, let's see how much airflow loss there is through that one connection, which I wouldn't imagine there would be a whole lot, honestly. All right, start on low. Okay, we had 9.44. Not much loss. So we were at like 25 point something. This is like 24 point something. Yeah, maybe like a half a CFM. Pretty insignificant. And that's kind of what I would expect. It's a good tight connection. And it's aluminum wand. Okay, let's crank it up to maximum and see what the difference is. I think we're all set. Sixteen fourteen. Do the old 
little calculation here. And we dropped a little bit down to about 42. So we've lost oh, probably around 2 CFM or so on high. Right now for the fun part, seeing what this joint does at a 45 degree angle with this head. How much are we going to lose through here? A lot going on in here compared to just putting on an extension tube. Now we have the V7 motor head on the airflow box. I have the handle reclined at about 45 degrees. And let's see what the remaining airflow is at the power nozzle. Um, I can't turn the brush roll off or I can't turn it off easily without hacking it. So it's going to be running in this case. Let's start out with low. And see what we get. and that ends up being 23 nozzle CFM on low. Okay, now let's crank it up to maximum. Reset that. Definite improvement up to 1397. So 36 CFM, nice little boost. And uh, the area of this nozzle is about the same as my Auric um, XL2800. It's around, uh, say, 14 or so square inches. So you can figure out the airflow density. Um, you know, if you take 36 there and say divide it by 14 on high, airflow density is about two and a half. So for a small head like this, that's not actually a bad airflow density at all. I have some full-size vacuums that have an airflow density less than that. Okay, so thanks for watching so far, and stay tuned for more tests with this V7.